You might be able to hear Lisa right now. <laughs> hey, Lisa. You able to hear it? Hey, Lisa B. Lisa B. Hello. Oh, cool. Hey, Greg. Oh, crap. Can we do a mic check? Hey, hey Greg. Greg. Could, Could you, you do a mic check for me fast? Check one, two. Test one, two, three. We the people. <laughs> North Palm Park for the game. Establish us true heads directly. Give us your speech, Greg. <laughs> well, somebody else wrote that speech, but... <laughs> yeah. We coming through? No, I don't hear anybody at the front. Are you just doing it out back? Uh, give it a second. It's probably a couple seconds behind. Test one, two. Check one, two, three. You should be hearing it. Yeah, there's should. there's a delay in that, so we're waiting for them to catch up. All right, we're good? Okay. Good? Okay. Yeah, we got it. Awesome. Thanks. We're good. Looks good. Right. Cool. Good? Bye, Adrian. Okay, awesome. so I should mute it right now.
and I lived on an avocado farm for a couple of years. And it was this tiny little Mayan village, nobody spoke any English, and I just helped them farm avocados, and I played with all the kids, and I went to their church, and I just, it was super fun. I just lived with the Mayan family. <laughs> I think it would be absolutely incredible, it would be a dream if I could be on like a marketing team, or maybe something like the head of marketing, for a nonprofit like um, Charity Water, they build wells in Africa to um, provide clean drinking water. And I just really like the humanitarian aspect of business. After graduating, I am not 100% sure where I want to go or what I want to do, but it's definitely not going to be boring. And I just hope it's somewhere warm and sunny where I can kind of all the time. Some advice I would give to um, other students and just kind of people in general, just I feel like you should just say yes a lot in any and all situations because really exciting things happen sometimes when you say yes. And if you're just saying no all the time to opportunities, things just kind of stay the same. So even if it's hard or scary, just, just say yes. Both of my parents are business owners. They own a trucking company together and they have for years. And I think I got my start in business that way as I just grew up always hearing them talking business. And I just really respect my dad. He was the one who started the company. And then um, my mom joined when they He just decided that he really liked trucks. He likes trucking, he likes working on trucks, and he doesn't like working for other people. And so he just took matters into his own hands and started the company. And I think that's kind of where I get the, the entrepreneurial blood from. My favorite thing about the program and really about the school in general is just how awesome the instructors are. They work very closely with you, very personally. They're there to help you find opportunities. They're there to help you um, like with your assignments, with your work, understand the tricks of the trade. Great people. And thanks to my instructors for getting me this far. Um, thanks to my parents for also getting me this far. All my, my friends I've met here and all my high school teachers that have motivated me and helped me get to the point. My name is Madeline Larson and I'm in the Fashion Merchandising and Development Program at Bridgerland Technical College. I chose Bridgerland Technical College because I love the flexibility it offered me. I was able to really figure out what I love and they offered me the flexibility to say you don't know what you want to do yet but we can help you learn and help you grow into a professional that you want to be. A dream job I would love to pursue is to be a freelance designer and seamstress. I'd love to be able to work on my own schedule and work on a variety of different projects for a bunch of different companies. How I got into the fashion industry and kind of wanted to pursue that is I started out at Utah State in their outdoor product design program, and which is an awesome program, but I didn't feel like it offered me the broad range that I wanted and it didn't have the fashion focus. And I heard about the Bridgerland Technical College program, and I loved that they were able to give me that fashion focus exactly what I wanted to do. After graduation, my plans are to continue being a freelance designer and seamstress. I'm currently working with a company based out of Logan as an intern, so I hope to work with them and become a freelance designer. For them. What inspires me in the fashion industry is watching what other people wear. I love to see how people um, show themselves and how they want to be represented. And I want to make clothes for people that helps them feel more represented and they think. My favorite thing about the Fashion Merchandising and Development Program is the teachers and advisors. They are so amazing at helping you figure out what you want to do and being supportive. They also do a great job supporting you and pushing you to become what you want to be and becoming more than you are. Appreciate the support they've given you. Advice I would give to future students is to not be afraid to just go after what you want. Dream super big and find your support team that get home. I'd like to say thank you to my teachers and my advisors. They've been such a huge help to me in inspiring me to pursue my career goals and to push my career goals past even what I could do. I'm so thankful to Virgil and Technical College for helping me develop as a professional and as a My name is Dakota Jones, and I am in the Welding Technology Program, and I'm from Colville, Utah. I chose Bridgeland Technical College because, well, when I first graduated from high school, I really wasn't sure what I was going to go into. So 
after looking over ideas and future careers, I spent the summer working on a hay barn. We were welding it out of drill pipe, and me and my dad built it from the ground up. And I realized I loved welding and loved the process of seeing all my visions come alive. And I just fell in love with welding and all sorts of the different stuff welding has to offer. So after looking at all the colleges and the options I had to go in the welding program, I chose Bridgeland Technical College because it's best for my schedule and it just worked out perfect for me. So that's why I chose Bridgeland Technical College. Well, some of my favorite hobbies and activities is one, I grew up on a 300 acre ranch and so I love doing everything outdoors and farming. But another thing is when I'm not outside, I'm in the shop working on my um, classic cars and restoring antique tractors. I drive a 76 Corvette that I fixed up and it drives just as good as the day it left the showroom for. One of my dream jobs is to own my own business. This way, like I said before, I have my own family farm, so I want to make sure I have time to work on that farm so I'm able to use my own hours and be able to cooperate with that. And even with welding, I can use my welding skills that I've learned here at Bridgeland Technical College into farming and when I build hay barns or corrals or uh, fence posts, anything like that, I can use welding in that as well. But after graduation, I plan to work on a smaller business for somebody, whether it might be for a trailer company or anything else, until I feel confident enough and I have enough money to start my own business and I can grow out and expand that way. Some advice I give to future students is no matter what I do, whether it's a project or a small goal, I just tell myself, I don't quit when I'm tired, I quit when I'm done. So whether that be I'm tired and I just want to call it a day, I say, no, can't do that. So I work and work until I'm done and I finish with that project and it just makes all things a lot easier in the long run. So what inspired me to become a welder was at a very young age, I always, I had my very own welding hood and I watched my dad weld when I was just a kid and he was always showing me how to weld and giving me tips when I was only 10, maybe 11 years old, I started welding and then when I went through high school, my act teacher, he also became a big impact and was, taught me a lot and so a lot of those two people became an inspiration of becoming a welder in my life because I know welding can be a huge aspect in life so that's why I chose that. Uh, one of my favorites about the school and the programs, one is I love the instructors and their willingness to help me learn and when they get so excited to teach me about all this different stuff and um, it's just been a lot from, I went to a small high school so our welding shop was relatively small so when I first walked through the doors here at Bridgeland Technical College I was amazed about how big and how much stuff that was here and how much I could learn and all the different processes of love. Well, a few people I'd like to one my family, a huge impact for them helping me to get to where I am today and all my teachers and instructors, I wouldn't be anywhere without you guys. So I'd like to thank all of you that helped me get this far in my life. My name is Jamie Bear. I am the from Smithfield, Utah. My program is culinary art. My dream job would probably be anything involving culinary. Something unique about me would probably be, well, it's probably not really unique to me, but I love to collect culinary um, cookbooks. It, especially the themed ones, I currently have like probably six at home and seven more in my Amazon wish list. I don't really have a specific place that I want to work at besides uh, Ruby's Grill um, up near USU campus. My favorite part about the program, about culinary arts program, would be how nice uh, the um, instructors are. My advice for future students is don't put off the book work. I, I promise you, get it done when you can. Don't leave it all for the end. What inspires me in culinary arts is not really any celebrity chef or anything, but back when I was like 
10 or 11, and I was allowed to make mac and cheese for the first time by myself. My sister and her friends said it tasted really good, and it made me feel warm inside, and I liked that feeling, and I wanted to keep feeling that feeling ever since. I would like to thank my instructors and the culinary arts program at Virginia Technical College. My year here in the culinary arts program has been so fun. I want to thank the instructors. They've been so great at teaching me and helping me feel more confident in my cooking. And I love the school. Hi, I'm the program at Virginia Technical College. I chose Bridgeland Technical College because there was flexibility with the program. I started out at BYU Hawaii in accounting and it wasn't a fit for me, so I switched to uh, marketing. Um, I transferred to BYU Idaho after two years in Hawaii. Went to BYU Idaho and started the new marketing program. But um, ended up graduating and I got a job as a marketing manager and I realized that. Marketing is a broad word, and you can't just. Uh, and I thought I felt that I needed to find a niche, and so um, I started looking again and realized I had a new design program. And so, long story short, I changed the new design. How I got started? So I took an art class in junior high, and I started there, and I really liked it. Um, but then I just kind of, I drifted away from it, and I was like, well, I'm set on marketing, I'm going to do something in business. And actually my brother is an art professor, and he kind of got me back into it. We speak about it and discuss things, just because it was closely related to marketing. I was doing, in my previous job, I was doing a lot of design work, but I didn't know all the ins and outs, so I was just doing it <laughs> the best that I could. And so at my previous job, I started to get into it, I talked to my brother, um, he kind of inspired me to maybe, if that's your dream, go, go pursue it. And so that's kind of what got me started into it. Advice that I would give is don't feel like you're stuck in a program. There, I feel like it can be like that at times. When you start a program, you feel like you have to finish it out. Um, it's always good to finish it out, but don't feel like you have to be stuck in one program. There are different options. Um, my dream job, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Um, I would like, I thought about something in fashion, uh, maybe a makeup company. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out, but I'm slowly My plan is after graduation, I'm going to continue to build a portfolio. I'm currently working on that right now. And um, I talked about freelancing, but I'm, that's still up in the air. Um, but I need to work for a company that has the same interests. Interest and goals in life. Someone that inspires me after a lot of time, a lot of time on social media after doing the new design program, it's be a different design. But uh, one designer that I really like is called Jane Purple Brown. She is, she's woman empowerment, and I, I really like that. That inspires me because women uh, have a lot to offer, and sometimes I feel like we're not we're a little shy sometimes and a little timid. And so she inspires me, and Destiny Darcel is also another designer that I love her work, and she inspires me. My favorite thing about the media is freedom, and it lets you think outside the box. You're not restricted to anything. I just want to thank my instructors for uh, pushing me to do the best I can be, and I want to thank the school for all the programs that they offer for everyone out there. My name is Ron Schultz. I'm from Benson, Utah, and I am attending Virginia Technical College in the machine technology program. I chose Bridgeland Technical College because uh, the programs are very, very inexpensive, but very hands-on. And a lot, a lot of people, are like, like I, are uh, hands-on learners pretty much exclusively. And I found a lot of opportunity when I uh, attended high school. The dream job or career that I would love to have from working and the skills that I've gained here at Bridgeland Technical College I would love to go into the off-road parts industry, making parts for off-road Jeeps or, or scramblers or even like, like, like motocross, motorcycles and other things. Or, or any of the car industry. I love vehicles and off-road things and I can find a lot of them. Instructors here are very, very kind. 
They're extremely helpful. I mean, Hands-on learning is the best learning. Uh, if you can get an education that way, that's the best way possible. The, the vibe here is kind of like a family. A lot of people are so happy here, which is good. And you can laugh. You can laugh in class, and people are, are pretty relaxed and willing to help you out. And so that's something that I, mean, I really appreciate because it's not nobody's really stuck out. I guess nobody's tight. Someone that has definitely inspired me, I would per se, my older brother. Uh, my older brother, he he first taught me to tear apart a motor, and that was that was a lot of fun. I learned a lot from him, and he he gave me inspiration to kind of go out to that the, the auto or welding or machine industry just because just because I find it fascinating. And so him, um, and then also my instructor when I came to Bridgeland Technical College. And uh, high school, I met Wes Chambers, and Trevor Hershey, and Vance Briggs. I met them. They all of them were very, very helpful and inspired me to to go down this route. And so when I when I came back from my mission, I went I came back to the room. So it was a lot of fun. My plans after graduation, I want to continue to find uh, a job to where I could be using my skills the most, the best, um, kind of doing programming, arts, and, and working on machines, and other things like that. The job I work at right now is awesome, but I want to expand. I want to get better at what, what I've learned here and expand on the knowledge I have. I will say, I will say this about Bridgeland College. It's a, it's a great place to be. And I would, I would come back for any program, or I would suggest any program to anybody. Just because it's, this college is expanding, there's a lot of growth here. A lot, of, a lot of potential. And I want to say thank you to my instructors, Wes Chambers, Trevor Hershey, and Vance Briggs. Well, my name is Spencer Anderson. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, so the program that I'm in is phlebotomy. The thing that made me choose Bridgeland Technical College is the fact that it has a good reputation. The instructors have experience, um, as well as the ability to network and have good job placement following completion of um, the phlebotomy program. My dream job is to be a physician one day. Um, so phlebotomy is nice because it is a good way to get patient exposure um, and have different interactions with patients in different settings. So you really get to see the different um, settings of the hospital being a phlebotomist, so both inpatient, outpatient, emergency room. Um, so it offers a breadth array of experiences in, in that setting. You know, being in, in phlebotomy, I, I love the sciences, but I also love to learn about history. I was my major in college. Um, so I really like to be able to learn about the sciences and apply the sciences, such as in, as in phlebotomy, but I love to learn about the past and people that have inspired me in the past. So I decided my junior year of college that I, I wanted to go to medical school. Um, my dad is in the healthcare field, he's a dentist. And so um, I was thinking about doing that a little bit, but I decided that. I like medicine, I like the breadth of it, I like the ability to um, help patients in the hospital setting as well. So it was kind of a different approach, but it's, it's turned out nicely. It's a good balance of both things. Um, and it allows me to have a balance of ideas and different experiences. I think one of the things that has been my favorite aspect of the program has been, uh, I would say my instructors. Um, my instructors have been very good very professional um, and very patient. Um, and another thing too is they've been very available to help answer questions. Work with your instructors and be proactive as well because um, your instructors know what they're talking about. Um, and it's more of an attitude thing. So the more positive you are about your course and the more effort you put into it, the more you get out of it. Um, another thing too is that your instructors notice when you're trying uh, when you're working hard. And when you're working hard in a program, your instructors are more willing to uh, reach out to people, um, to help you get jobs, um, because they do know a lot of different people who can help set you up um, for whatever group that you want to do. You know, I, I can't really say a specific person that inspires me. I would say, though, that one of the things that I definitely want to get more involved in is humanitarian work, and that's kind of one of the reasons that I wanted to get involved in the, in the medical field is I know that like a lot of places around the world, a lot of countries and throughout history, that's one of the things that has always been lacking 
is uh, proper access to medical care, not only in the United States, but also um, internationally. So there's a lot of need for people with those skill sets and a very valuable skill sets. So after graduation from the phlebotomy program, uh, my plan is to um, get a job doing phlebotomy, hopefully in a, in a hospital setting. Um, so, and then work while I'm applying to medical school. I'd just like to thank my instructors again. So that includes Aubrey, Carmel, Jill, uh, Joe, and other people who came and helped us in the phlebotomy class. It was very um, professionally done. It was very well put together. Um, and I appreciate the attention to detail, as well as the willingness uh, for you guys to reach out and to help us network and get these jobs. Because a lot of the times, we don't know, you know if we're going to be able to find uh, jobs going into these programs, but I love the fact that we do have that network here and that if we're willing to put in our work on, on our end that we know and we trust that you guys are going to help us out. I'm Kendall Williams, I'm from Edison, Wyoming, and I'm in the service. I chose surgery and technical college because uh, after high school my mom always said you have to do something. I would like to um, be a farmer. My, my dream is to be 100% I really just like learning new things and uh, especially skills that make you develop muscle memory. Doing things with your hands that has, it's fascinating to me how you can teach, your, teach yourself to physically do something. It, it, that's really fun. Um, all the people that I met here have been really, really Having a full freezer is, is is just the best feeling in this world. I, I inherited that from my mom. There's there's no better feeling than having a full freezer. So there's a sense of security to that. I generally tend to agree with Mike Rowe. There's none of people with traits. A trait is always going to be useful. There's no. There's always going to uh, be a need for plumbers or welders or electricians or butchers that no matter how the social climate is or the economic climate is there's always a need for those jobs if you have a trade under your belt you're going to be way better off than you would be otherwise after graduation um my brother took, took the knee services uh, too, and he's starting up his own custom shop and the plan is I, I will be like ready and the best the best advice I can give anybody is it's, just, it's not that difficult Good evening. Are you all excited to be here? That's right. We have some graduates to celebrate. I am Renee Milnes, and it's my honor to serve as the Associate Vice President for Student Services of Bridgerland Technical College. On behalf of the college, I want to welcome you to our semi-annual graduation. We ask that our guests please stand as the graduates enter. After all the graduates have taken their place, please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Logan City Honor Guard.
Please stay standing. We're waiting for the honor guard. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, under God, Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much for being here tonight and celebrating the success of your graduates. I would like to introduce our distinguished guests who are seated, seated on the stage. Associate Commissioner Taylor Adams, President Chad Campbell, Executive Vice President and Provost Wendy Carter, Senator Scott Sandel, and our student speaker Lorica Pulidi. Last but not least, faculty and staff. Without them, none of this would be possible. We are honored to have with us this evening members of the Utah System of Higher Education, the Utah Board of Education, and Bridgerland Technical College Board of Trustees. We would like to thank these community members for volunteering their time to advocate for our students, our employers, and for technical education overall. They lend their experience in helping guide the success of the college and in raising funds to support student scholarships and to obtain the technical equipment that we need. We also want to express our sincere appreciation to the Regional Career and Technical Education Directors, Cache County School District, and Ridgeline High School for allowing us to use this beautiful venue. To accommodate our year-round open entry enrollment model, the college holds a graduation ceremony twice each year, one in December and this one in June. Due to space limitations, the college also holds program-specific graduations for practical nursing, police academy, fire and rescue services, and paramedic programs throughout the year. Tonight, well, for this graduation, we have around 600 graduates total. Joining us tonight, 214. We are so proud to have the largest walking graduation ceremony thus far in our history. Congratulations. Now, of course, those who could be here are probably working, right? That's the whole goal of you coming to school here, right? So it's okay, they're at work. <laughs> Thank you all for your display of support to your graduates. As you can see, we have a full auditorium. If you have an empty seat next to you, could you wave your arms or point to somebody? We also have an overflow area for families and friends that's in the cafeteria, the commons area, where graduation is being broadcast live. So you're welcome to go out there, and then when your graduate is walking, you can come back in for pictures if you prefer to do that. There are two groups of students graduating this evening that we would like to call your attention to. Each group is wearing a recognition medallion. The first are the high school students who completed their college certificate prior to high school graduation. The high school medallion is black, and how great is it to have a college certificate and your high school diploma at the same time? We are so proud. Those students, could you please stand? Maybe they can lift the lights.
goes to you. That is no small feat. Thank you. The second are the Platinum Performers. These are students who were chosen by their instructors and have shown exemplary workmanship in the programs throughout Bridgerland, their Bridgerland experience. They have demonstrated a positive attitude of eagerness to learn and willingness to take direction from their instructors. They are willing to reach out to others and help them in their educational journeys. They have completed the curriculum at the highest academic level and have maintained exceptional attendance. The medallion for the Platinum Performers is red. Will the Platinum Performers please stand up? Thank you. Our Platinum Performers are also receiving a gift courtesy of Cash Valley Bank. All right, both of these groups of students have reached far and above what is expected, and we are so proud of them. Another special thanks to our welding and technology students and the marketing department for creating and providing every graduate a Bridgerland Technical College medallion. Another special thanks I would like to extend is to our graduation committee. They worked so hard to make sure that this night is wonderful for everybody, and I really appreciate them. We will now hear from one of our current graduates, Lorica Palivi, and following Lorica, we will hear from Associate Commissioner Taylor Adams, and President Campbell will then introduce our guest speaker, Senator Sandal. see what I can see. Just wow. Never in a million years did I ever think I would be speaking to you at graduation ceremonies. Welcome fellow graduates, honored guests, families, and friends. My name is Laura Capalivi and I am so honored to be here tonight. I need to thank my family and friends for bring support love my higher education journey. Even more than the words can say. Okay, enough of that. Education yes. and resilience. It was always a dream of mine to get a college education, but not something I ever thought I would happen. When I graduated from high school, just a few years ago, I began my higher education journey at the U of U. But that was very short, mostly because of cost. Then when I say life happens, and mine took a different direction, I became a wife and supported my husband through his vocation and his career. I became a mother to three of the best people I know. And two also have graduate certificates. Within the last five years or so, I started seriously considering my own need for education, not only to better myself, but to also be a good example to my children and others. I'm not the usual right out of high school student. I had a lot of fear and a lot of self-doubt. I researched different options, but Bridgerland stood out on many flexibility and career readiness, just to name a few. Bridgerland's mission to deliver competency-based employer-guided career and technical education spoke to me as a practical education model something I felt was exactly what I needed. I have a magnet on my fridge at home that says, it is never too late to be what you might have been by George Eliot. Bridgerland afforded me the opportunities to fulfill what I might become. Get in, get out, and get a job is on the wall just outside the reception of the main campus. I like this very much because it implies we don't waste time, money, or resources here. I did not want to go into tens of thousands of dollars of debt to get my education. It was extremely important for me to be able to afford whatever school I went to. Bridgerland's option for the monthly payment plan made budgeting for school so much easier. Then the availability of scholarships also helped a lot. Future students, scholarships are available. You just need to apply. That's my shameless plug. 
Virgil then stood out with flexibility. I completed the business technology program completely online while continuing to work full time, be a wife and a mother. Originally, I was going to be a student in the evening classes of the business technology program on Bergen City campus, but then COVID and everything went online. I was not given a start date since no one knew when things would start the path to normalcy again. After visiting with my instructor on the phone, Kristen agreed to start me as an online student. Online learning was uncharted waters for me. I had never experienced learning in that way before. So many questions. Would I be able to understand? Would I be able to dedicate the time necessary to complete the program and do the work? How would I get my book advice? And so many others. But once I got started, my instructor and I had weekly visits via Zoom, and sometimes more often than that, because I needed extra help. She was very patient with me while I navigated this new way of learning. I need to thank Kristen for that and for her dedication to me as one of her students. I barely learned her teaching style and expectations when she went on a leave, and I was fortunate enough to have a substitute who was just as dedicated, and she squeezed me in wherever she could, whenever I needed help. Thank you, Emily. You do not know how much that meant to me. This level of dedication to each student is unique to Bridgeline. And it quickly became another reason to attend school here. Our instructors truly believe in us. They get to know each of us. They cheer us on. They celebrate our small victories and truly want to see us, see us succeed. We are not just another face in a crowded auditorium of nameless individuals. Our instructors are true professionals, but they also become our mentors and friends. I am so grateful to them for their support and encouragement. I am sure each of us have many stories that we could tell about the dedication of our instructors and staff. Our student success advisors are among the first contacts and really can be an inspiration to us. Leandra was my SSA and I truly appreciate her and she has cheered me on throughout my program. The online program had so much flexibility for me, however, it was all up to me to be consistent and stay dedicated to completing it. That dedication is why I'm here with you today, graduating with you. Before I finished the program, I changed careers, using much of what I learned throughout the program every day. There's always a little anxiety when starting something new, but knowing how much I had learned to prepare me for that step was helpful in reducing a lot of that anxiety. I could tell you about business math, math, Excel, spreadsheets, Word, job seeking skills, reference manuals. Do you know how many commas there are in the English language? And they all look the same. Or the basics in accounting, but we are here to celebrate all of our achievements. The ability to pursue educating and improving oneself is never a waste of time. Many of you may, may know that I work in the financial aid office at Bridgerland. That was the career change I, I referenced to. I, I always wanted a career that allows me to serve others. I have the best job with the very best people. Vanessa, Nicole, Renee, and everyone else in student services, you really are the best. The technology program helps me prepare for the career I have, but I'm Today, a student came to my office and sat down at my desk and said, I need to change my hours. I got a job. I said, really? Where? This student was an automotive service student at a local auto parts store. I said, that's exciting. He says, yeah, that's pretty cool. He says, well, what I like best, though, is one day a gentleman came in and needed a new wiring harness for his car. He says, I was able to help him not only find the right wiring harness, because we don't know there's a lot of them, but I was also able to help him with the step-by-step -step instructions on how to install that wearing harness, all because of training at Bridgerland. I looked at him and I said, don't you love it when the classroom meets the real world, real world application? He smiled back and said, sure does, feels good. I'm sure each one of you here have a story similar to that, maybe many. 
I have heard that Virgil Lynn students are among the most prepared for their careers when compared to other tech schools. I believe it. Recently, a former nursing student spoke at the groundbreaking for the new Frederick Lawson Quinney Health Sciences Building and recounted her experiences as a practical nursing student. Those experiences prepared her to become an RN, and now she's also efficient. She's gone on and become a physician's assistant, all because of her excellent start at Bridgeland. One of my models for myself is I can do hard things, but I'm not the only one. Going to college is a hard thing, and we can look back on those years or months and feel proud that we did hard things. Now, on to the next hard things in our lives. In the words of St. Ignatius Loyola, not literally, it is our time to shine with the skills and knowledge we have gained to be our own success stories. Go conquer the world, fellow graduates, and congratulations on a job well done. everybody and it's so great to be here and to see our graduates here in the front row smiling and crying and celebrating. I welcome you tonight on behalf of Commissioner Wilson Hume for the Utah System of Higher Education. Now you're probably thinking what is the Utah System of Higher Education? Well we represent the 16 public institutions in the state of Utah including universities, community colleges, and technical colleges. And that means that during this time of year, we get to celebrate graduates all over the state of Utah. It's an exciting time across the state and a more exciting time for this valley, specifically with our Bridgeland Technical College graduates tonight. I have to tell you a quick story about seven years ago when I attended my first technical college graduation. I was sitting in the audience at that time, and as the graduates came up on stage and received their certificates and their credentials, a little girl, stood up behind me when a woman crossed the stage and said, that's my grandma, as loud as she could. And I was so excited. And so right now, kids, what I wanna do is I want you to cheer really loudly on the count of three if you're here tonight celebrating a mom, a dad, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, or a neighbor. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. take a second to have our graduates celebrate our families and friends that are with us tonight. And so graduates, I'm also going to give you the opportunity to hoot and holler here in a minute to thank not only your family and friends who are here tonight, but those friends that you made alongside you yourselves. Let's celebrate. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, don't tell um, other people this, but technical college graduations happen to be my very favorite. As a member of this community in Cache Valley, I can tell you that whenever I go anywhere, I run into somebody who has graduated from Bridgerland Tech, whether that's at the dentist's office, meeting with a dental assistant, or if I go to get my blood drawn, it's a phlebotomist, somebody in my kid's pediatric office. Uh, my husband is even a, a a graduate of the HVAC program here and has done great work in plumbing as well. And so what I want to say tonight is why technical college students matter and why your graduation matters is because a lot of you are going to be employed in high wage, high demand careers. And as Renee already mentioned, some of you already are and they may be out tonight working already. And so with that, I want to say you are doing the work that matters to our communities, that our community needs, that the state of Utah needs, not only to just not only to survive, but also to thrive. And so thank you on behalf of the Utah System of Higher Education. We appreciate you being here tonight, and we're so excited for you. First of all, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, taller than Lorica and Taylor both. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Lorica, for your excellent comments and for being here this evening. It's my honor and my privilege to get to introduce our guest speaker, 
and it's customary at this point for me to just read a short bio about him. About Sandal, first represented, represented House District 1 in the Utah State Legislature from 2015 to 2019, and currently serves in the Utah Senate from 2019 to the present. He served as the chair of Business, Economic Development, and Labor Appropriations Committee. And Natural Resources, Ag, and Environmental Committee. And mostly he chaired the Redistricting Committee. He also co-chairs Utah's Constitutional Defense Council. Senator Sandel also serves on two additional legislative committees, Natural Resources, Agriculture, and Environment Appropriations Committee and the Business and Labor Committee. His business interests include being the owner and operator of Sandal Ranches, a fourth generation farm and a ranch in Promontory, Utah. Uh, also, Sandal Trucking, LLC, and S&P Investments, LLC. Senator Sandal has been active in the community, serving as Box Elder County Farm Bureau President, Utah Farm Bureau State Board Member, Bear River High School Council, and a Scout Leader. Senator Sandal has an Agricultural Economics degree from Brigham Young University, where he graduated magna cum laude. He is a Box Elder County native, where he lives with his wife, Christy, and Christy's here with us this evening. And they are the parents of four children and a growing number of grandchildren. Scott and Joyce's family work and golf. Will you please join me in welcoming Senator Scott Sandel as our guest speaker. President, uh, it, uh, it's indeed an honor for me to be here. Um, I really do identify, first of all, as, as a husband, father, and grandfather who happens to uh, farm and ranch and occasionally works in the state legislature. Um, that's, my bio kind of gets that all backwards, and I just want you to know that the, the kind of the important things for me are, are those of home and family first, um, and stealing some time at the golf course. Um, I want to. I want to first of all to uh, congratulate you as graduates. Um, looking, I think as you look back on your on your life as you go through life, you're going to find that you use a lot more of the education that you got than you realize that you will today. I, I want to thank the faculty and administrators here at Bridge. I, I can't tell you how much love and support I have for the Technical College and the technical college program and, and the support that the legislature uh, appreciates what we do and what you will be doing for our state and in our state. Just a couple of remarks. Um, first of all, this past week, um, I happened to come across a, a quote. It's not actually a quote, it's just a, a thought. Uh, it was given in a religious context, but I think it serves well for graduation and for kind of what I wanted just to mention briefly tonight. It says, sometimes we imagine that our lives should follow a clear path from beginning to end. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, after all. And yet life is often full of delays and detours that take us in unexpected directions. We may find that our lives are quite different from what we thought they should be. take a few minutes and share a couple of perspectives. I have found that far too many people are always looking for happiness in life when some future event will occur. They're always looking for that next job or vacation or weekend or something else that they consider will be joyful or give them happiness when they arrive at that point. All too often, as this uh, statement leads us to believe, that the twists and turns in life will not maybe pan out the way we think they should. 
Life is about enjoying the journey. It's about find, finding happiness in the journey. That's not to say that we don't anticipate goals and we have things that we try to do and accomplish, but the point is find the joy and the happiness in today. And when you arrive at that point that you think is your destination, the arrival will be so much sweeter. Two things that I'd like to share along those lines, and there could be many, but the first thing I'd like to, to share with you about enjoying each day and enjoying the journey may seem a little odd to you. It's honesty. I truly have found over the course of my life that I can be more content, I can be more happy, I can enjoy each day more when I find myself being more and more honest. Honest with the people around me. Giving my word and then sticking to that word. And if something comes up unexpected, making sure that the person that, that I've contracted with somehow knows that there's a difference. As was stated, I, I own and operate a, a cattle ranch and a dry farm, and we do almost all of our business over the phone or with a handshake. And I have learned to appreciate what honesty can do and how that can help us in our life. The other suggestion that I might have comes, and, and I carry it with me all my life. It began in 1978 as a junior in high school when a career fair happened at Bear River High School, and a man known to me as Hank the Petunia King, came to speak to us. Now, Hank was the, uh, uh, he was the son of a Norwegian immigrants named Henry C. worked in the floor business at eight years old, shortly after the death of his mother. He went on to become an incredibly good and well-known floor here in the state of Utah. He came to speak to us in 1978, and the one message, the one takeaway that I got from that that I'd like you to think about is he loved getting up every morning and being in the floor. He couldn't wait to get out the door, to go be part of his career, to be what he wanted to be excited him. And his message was, it doesn't matter how many careers you may start in, but find the one to finish in that you want to get up out of bed in the morning and you're excited to go to. That doesn't mean that every day is perfect. That doesn't mean that every day ha comes up roses, but it does mean that you can find something that gets you excited to work at and to go accomplish. I hope that as you contemplate and take the knowledge that you have gained and continue to gain Find that path in life that gives you happiness. Enjoy the journey along the way. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with your fellow beings. Find that career that makes you happy. We appreciate what you're going to do for our state and in our society. You will have challenges. Life will take different turns, but I have faith in you and your generation that you will accomplish great things. Congratulations and good luck. All right, now we will have the presentation of the graduates. Right? <laughs> Graduates will be excused row by row by a staff member to line up for presentation. Graduates, you will come to the stage, exit the opposite side, and you will return to your seats. You ready to go? program will be Animal Sciences.
Dana Arnett. Sarah Nicole Erickson. Jessica Fernandez. And she's a platinum performer. Madison Corinne Gardner. Kaylee Sue Hale. Anna Hall. Mara Harris. Bailey Hume. Renee Morgan. <laughs> Leah Peck. <laughs> Singleton. Maya <laughs> Celeste Swinson. Kiersa Thompson. Bernie <laughs> Wells. Nutrition. <laughs> Britton Parkinson. Jordan Spalding Cephalo. <laughs> Follow me, take us. <laughs> David Westfall. <laughs> Payson Wright. Prentice Plummer, Tanner Bott, <laughs> Justin Finster, Jeremy Lopez, <laughs> hey, Auto Collision. Diego Avalez. <laughs> Eduardo Manuel Garcia. Sadie Coombs. Eber Roskelly. Joshua Stewart and Justin Stewart. Automated manufacturing. Jason Goss. Jose Hernandez. George Marroquin. <laughs> Trey Pitcher. Nathaniel Sidwell. Tate Smith. Native Service.
Carter Downs, and he's a platinum performer. And Mason Perkins. Butters. Barbara Corcoran. Darlene Fairbanks. Josephson. Cosmetology and Barbering. Ana Gonzalez. Yasmin Fuentes. Kelly <laughs> Harris. <laughs> Kelly 
Kendra Keller. Sarahi Martinez. Chloe Mills. Casey Nelson. Bridget Noble. Julia Ostergar Romero. Denise Peterson. Well Romero. Lindsay Stoddard. Valerie Williams, Katie Larson, Cecil, Brett Chase Brueggemann. Swanabelt, Braxton Webb, Drafting, Natalie Nicole Hansen. Dean Krause, Electronic Engineering Technology, Alan Lorenzo Johnson, Ben Ross Kelly. Jason Turkelson. <laughs> Emergency medical technician. <laughs> Lindsay Carlson. Charles Coulter, <laughs> Kenna Morris, Blanca <laughs> Lopez.